Alright, there's Eli Tomac, second overall. Ken Roxon has gone 1-1-1 one, one, one to make the math easy because we're idiots and we would have never put it together, including the fact that Cooper Webb somehow went, hey, uh, Marshall, what, did, what, did, what were Cooper Webb's scores? There it is. 8-5-4. For fourth. fourth hey Phil, what if do you, you think went, Phil would have got with Phil, that? if you went eight five four, what do you get? Nine. Ninth overall. <laughs> Phil's very mad. So we had our watch party. Uh, it's the weed show. It's brought to you by Race Tech Suspension. Oh, Art of War. Uh, uh, suspension will have better bottom resistance, will be plusher and more traction, and made and engineered right here in the USA. Some people money. don't have suspension on their practice bikes. I made my money. Yes, we had a bet going tonight. Oh, we had a bet going tonight, and we found out that this man, Travis Beam, never loses bets. Never oh, loses bets. Hey, I like to do random stuff. All right, but I like are you... I do a lot of random bets, but I, I, for some reason, I have a vibe when it starts. Which is Roxanne tonight? Not a fan. You're not a fan, but... No, I like his wife. I'm friends with her. Okay, you're friends with Cover Rocks' oh, wife. Oh, that's not an action. I, I know. We're going to edit that out. With the Tito's hey, Lord look at that. <laughs> Tito's from Rockstar. Tito? Look, Phil's mad because if he had gone 8 5 4 like Cooper Webb, he would have gotten ninth overall. Webb got fourth, but he's going to chase it with a fresh OG, Phil. A fresh OG. Yep. There's your triple count champion right there. Yeah. Nothing but the latest in professionalism for our uh, watch party here, uh, courtesy of our man, uh, Johnny Oler and uh, Phil and Marshall Welton. Thanks, guys. And uh, Chad Reed's practice bike making a guest appearance uh, in tonight's video. All this uh, Haas CNC, very high-end machinery, is uh, not part of the wing of the building that I work in. This is way beyond uh, my level of engineering understanding. But what I can do is break down Supercross races. After Anaheim won, there is a theory out there being peddled by the likes of myself. And that theory was that Adam Cien Cerullo, a rookie, was an absolute sensation in Anaheim 1. And Cooper Webb, despite being terrible in practice and being sick, finished third. And that meant they beat both Ken Roxon and Eli Tomek, who struggled at the season opener. And let's throw in another fact. Cooper Webb already has the elusive 450 Supercross championship that Roxon and Tomac have not been able to get, and he's younger than them. And Cien Cerullo, same generation as Webb. Maybe, maybe, I heard this theory being peddled, and I did it myself. Maybe the window had already closed for Roxon and Tomac, who have had year after year after year to get this done. Maybe their window had already closed. Maybe the next generation was already here. But guess what? Three races later, what have we seen? A Roxon win, a Tomac win, a Roxon win. In the last two weeks, they've gone one, two. They flipped the order, but the bottom line is they have been the best two Supercross riders the last couple of weeks. Tomac got fourth at St. Louis, but he started 19th. You could argue he is maybe the second fastest guy at that race. So maybe that's three races in a row where Roxon and Tomac have been the best. Is it finally the year that we get Roxon and Tomac battling for this title like we thought we would get all the way back in 2014 when they were rookies and 2015 when Villapoto quit and it was hashtag who's next and everyone figured Ryan Dungey was done and it was going to be Roxon and Tomac taking control. As a matter of fact, with the hashtag who's next back in 2015, I said they should just say it's called hashtag Kenny Eli. Kenny Eli. Because they're going to be the guys. Maybe we are finally there. What's also interesting is how much the tracks have changed the last couple of weeks. The two Anaheims ended up being super technical. These guys are really loud. i got to get out of here. The tracks ended up being really technical in Anaheim. The first race was uh, almost outdoor motocross-like. It had ruts and it had square bumps. Very technical. Last week's race at Anaheim was technical only from the standpoint of the second set of whoops were just super gnarly. And Tomac just was a beast there and had everybody handled. These guys are really loud over here. I think there's some sort of bet going on. I don't know. We had a watch party tonight here in uh, North Carolina for this race. We watched it on NBC Sports Gold. The other two races this year, tonight, Glendale and St. Louis, were pretty wide open. You were really seeing the intensity of these guys. There weren't a whole lot of things to separate. It was all about that intensity, especially when you throw in the Triple Crown format, which means you're going to go pedal to the metal right off the rip. And in those two races, Roxon has been the best. He has not put a wheel wrong. He was so smooth every single time. And by the way, Ken Roxon as a starter, nothing exceptional. 
and he's actually probably worse than you think. He's just so good usually in the first lap of races that it tends to disguise that he does struggle with starts at times. Great start at St. Louis. Great start at Anaheim too. Great start in all three of the Triple Crown races tonight. So suddenly now we're looking at Ken Roxham as like this dynamo starter. Better than he's probably ever been. And super smooth. It's almost like the Ken Roxham of old is finally back. And I cannot possibly number or count or multiply the amount of times we've had a Ken Roxham's back, Roxham rebirth. Here's Kenny, back to 2017 fashion and form. We've wanted to write that story for so long. We might finally be getting it now. With one caveat. Even in Roxon's prime years, even pre-injury Kenny, he always does his best work at the beginning of a championship. There's been many series where he's at the red plate and did not hold it to the end of the series and ended up losing. And even in seasons where he did win the title, he was often better at the beginning of the year than at the end. So we're only four rounds into a 17 race championship. Although he looks like the Roxon of old in many ways, we have to remember that even the Roxon of old and even the Roxon of new, Tended to have problems maintaining that. He's had the points lead many, many times. Is this the time that he actually holds at the end of Supercross? Well, several other riders have something to say about that. Tonight, the whoops really did get to Webb. Uh, it's been his Achilles heel the last two years. He's been able to get away with it on most, night, most nights. There was no jumping line through the whoops tonight, and it cost him big time. And seeing Cirillo, the bubble finally burst on the rookie season with a brutal crash late in the whoops in the third race. I just hope the guy's okay. So maybe we're starting to see a little separation. Uh, it looked like 12 guys could run for the win any week. You know by usually round five, you know who the established players are. You cannot count Webb out. You cannot count Anderson out. They are proven championship guys. But Tomac and Roxon look very good right now. Uh, Zach Osborne also took a beating tonight. Anything that could have gone wrong uh, for Zach Osborne in the first turn uh, went wrong. He actually managed to have like the full menu of like first turn crashes, early race crashes, uh, crashes with a restart, and then problems again. Now we're starting to see some of the bad luck strike a lot of the riders, and it's starting to boil down to just a few names. And guess what? Those names right now are Roxon and Tomac. Maybe we're finally going to get what we thought we were going to have five years ago. Because right now, Ken Roxon looks as good as ever, which is hard to believe he could get back to that level if he can maintain it. I don't know. Bundy's breaking it down. Phil's breaking it down. These guys are making bets. The coverage has concluded. The race is over. What do you think tonight? What'd you think? Who's the best man in cars? Marshall Weldon. Marshall Weldon was the best. What, what's your last name? <laughs> Jordan. And, hey, show, hey, show, hey, show the hat that he's wearing. Oh, yeah. Hey, look. Look, man. This is how we do. How much JB pay you guys? This is how we do, man. No, JB's a Honda guy. We don't need to talk about that. You go to the shower and put that hat on. We, we call him Bobby. Chorbs. We call him Bobby. No, it's Chorbs. Chorbs? Yeah, Chorbs. Well, Chorbs, Chorbs, Bobby, all the same. I mean, why wouldn't you call him Bobby? His name is Chorbs. It makes complete sense. Chorbs, Bobby for sure. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, that's our watch party. We'll probably be back here next weekend. Team Racked. Team Racked. Hashtag Team Racked.